American Mississippi residents. Well, when I see that title, I guess I have to add, or a drinking water crisis in Flint, Michigan, or a drinking water cut, uh, by, by, by crisis in Jim Clyburn's own district in South Carolina. And there was something in upstate New York, too, that was an area. Yeah, there are drinking water crises all over the United States, and the federal government is not doing anything about it because I guess the federal government is deciding it's a local problem and not really the business of the federal government. But the drinking water crises are being caused by corporations um, 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 often multinational corporations and the damage they're doing to the environment. And if we're going to do anything about this, the federal government has got to be involved. I think if we had a presidency of Robert F. Kennedy, we would soon find the federal government would be very heavily involved in solving the drinking water crisis all over the United States. Anyway, getting to the article. Uh, uh, the article doesn't carry an author. It seems to just be a product of uh, Press TV itself. There's a picture of murky liquid, <laughs> looks like coffee, flowing from the faucet of a residential home in Mississippi, underscored the serious water crisis plaguing the states. What do they drink? They can't drink that. No, and this is what it costs people a fortune, having to go to buy bottled water. Yes. And then even how do you shower? You have to use that bottled water to shower. I'll fill a bathtub up with water. Right. I mean, that's a lot of water to buy. That's a lot of water to buy, and most of the people in Mississippi are pretty poor anyway. Uh, anger is boiling over in the U.S. state of Mississippi, in the U.S. Uh, um, state of Mississippi, amid deteriorating drinking water crisis due to poor infrastructure, with locals saying the U.S. government spends billions of dollars on wars and weapons while ignoring its own citizens. Hundreds of thousands of residents have been left with, uh, with muddy water running from taps, leaving citizens with no choice other than resorting to bottled water. And we have here uh, from um, Paul Canosa. This is the water in the USA. Billions for water, nothing for Mississippi. And there's a little video here, which I will play. Oh, God. It's buffering. You could hear the water running. And you can see it. it looks like dark coffee, but of course it's not. Well, I think that's enough. Thank you. Okay. Pretty disgusting. It is, and it's a long time. You know, these water crises and water issues, how it's not fixed right away, it just, it's frightening to think that this country allows this. I think the water crisis in Flint is a decade old. Right, it makes no still sense. Haven't but... fixed it, okay, Obama was the president when it first uh, started. Well, actually, yeah, he was the president when it first started. I think it's more than a decade. I think it must be 13 years or something like that now. Mm -hmm. According to human rights groups, African Americans are expected to be hardest hit by the current crisis as these populations live in low income areas played with poor water infrastructure and insufficient funding. Because of a failure to improve its aging infrastructure, residents in the majority of Black City have lived for years with service disruptions 
and periodic boil water warnings, as well as issues related to contaminants such as lead and E. coli bacteria. According to reports, the ongoing crisis is the result of underinvestment in water infrastructure in the past decade. In 2021, Congress passed the $1.2 trillion infrastructure package, sending about $4.46 billion to Mississippi over the next five years, with the White House releasing a preliminary breakdown of where and how the money will flow to Mississippi. However, the project has continued at a slow pace, whereas the state has not only failed to fund infrastructure assistance, but recently enacted a $524 million income tax break that has constrained the state budget, including for infrastructure funds. As Americans are struggling with limited financial resources last month, U.S. President Joe Biden has recently announced a new $375 million package of military aid to Ukraine, despite uh, warnings from, uh, from Russia. Now, that's very interesting. What's most interesting about it is that it doesn't put in the context. The $375 uh, $375 million package is just a little step in the overall aid package of something like $125 billion now that has been appropriated for Ukraine. That $375 billion in context is nothing but a very short drink of water. The the U.S. and its Western allies have kept feeding Ukraine with massive amounts of arms since the start of the Ukraine war last year, which, according to Russia, is the sole reason the conflict is not coming to an end. It is. It is. is We've prolonged the war there to the point where... Uh, we allowed, well, not simply allowed, we torpedoed uh, the agreement that Ukraine and Russia had come to with the good offices of Turkey, okay, in April of 2022. If not for a hurried flight to Ukraine uh, by, uh, by Boris Johnson, who said to the Ukrainians that they wouldn't get any more aid if the war did not end. Uh, um, um, I'm sorry, if the war ended. Uh, uh, Of course, the Ukrainians backed down and said, okay, we'll continue fighting. But if not for that, the war would have been over in April of 2022. And here we are, of course, nearly in June of 2023. Uh, Russia has repeatedly warned the United States against arming Ukraine and fanning the flames of war. And the Russians, of course, are doing something about this because they've been destroying uh, the latest round of arms that uh, uh, we're sending there by locating Uh, the arms depots uh, that we've sent there and blowing them up uh, using hypersonic missiles. Uh, I don't know um, how much of the aid package is going to get there. But uh, the war goes on. Uh, There was supposedly supposed to be an attack by... Uh, the Ukraine, the, sort of the uh, the spring, summer, fall counterattack that has been coming and coming and coming. Uh, and nobody knows exactly when it's going to come. I think they're promising sometime in the next two weeks now. But I don't think we've been able to get the equipment there the Ukrainians need to uh, actually have their counterattack. Okay. I don't think Zelensky wants to have the counterattack at this point. I think Biden is insisting upon it. 
However, Zelensky says, no, we don't have the equipment that we need to make it successful. So I don't know whether their counterattack is going to take place, but uh, and I don't know how long the Russians are going to wait for it to see whether it takes place or whether they're going to throw their additional 300,000 troops in uh, to create a major attack of their own. Maybe finally a big arrow offensive. We have to wait and see whether that happens. So anyway, that's my commentary on this article and my reading of this article. Uh, uh, what really gets me upset is that it's not like the funding for the war is necessarily competitive with the necessary funding for the infrastructure. We know that it's possible for the United States to spend for all its needs simultaneously because we are a monetary sovereign. If we need to fix okay, our infrastructure, including the infrastructure for supplying good, clean water to residents, we can do it. And we can do it now. And people okay, in our government are still acting like the economics of neoliberalism is true and that there's only a certain amount of money that can be devoted to uh, that the federal government can raise so that somehow the billions for war competes financially with the water crisis in America. No, it doesn't. No. Uh, but even though the expenditures on the Ukraine are evil and stupid. Uh, they still don't stop us from spending uh, to solve the water crisis here in the United States. What stops us from doing that is our own venality and stupidity and unwillingness to spend on the needs of our people. This has to stop. We have to take care of the public purpose. And we're not doing that. Yeah. Well, we're not doing it. And every election that goes around, what do, what do they do? They promise we're gonna do this. And I'm sure the areas that are having problems with water, they're promising them they get, they're going to get the funds for fixing the pipes. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then nothing gets done. And it doesn't get done because of because both parties mm -hmm. are dominated by the donors. And the donors don't care about doing anything for people. They don't care about the infrastructure. No. They only care about the infrastructure that facilitates their businesses. They don't give a damn about infrastructure that facilitates the health of our citizens. We have to end uh, the domination of our political system by the wealthy donors, uh, um, by the corporations, by the PACs and the super PACs. Yes, we do. We have to get rid of all that. We have to get rid of the toxic money. And as voters, we have the power to do it. But we have to come together. And we have to see to it that no one gets into office who is taking any of the big money. It's got to be all small dollar donations taking anything else has to be considered the kiss of death for a politician. It has to automatically mean 
that we the, the people will defeat uh, that politician, whatever they say, whatever their promises, as long as they're bought by this big money, we cannot trust uh, these promises. And could you look at all the money? Can you imagine having to buy water for everything? Bottled water to flush your toilet? But Well, I guess you could flush it with the disgusting, but how is that going to be, you know? I we mean, could probably fix the water out. infrastructure across the United States. Um, not the whole infrastructure, but just the water part of it. Mm -hmm. For a total expenditure of between 300 and 500 billion. We can easily afford that right now in one year. We can pay for it with a single platinum coin. It's bullshit that we can't afford to do this. It's fiscally irresponsible that we are failing to do this. And the people are in Congress. They get elected. And we have some of them that are constantly, they're reelected over and over again. And nothing changes. You have As a the matter of fact, it's the majority of them that are reelected over and over and over again. I mean, when you think about it, because that's an everyday life situation when it comes to water. Right, but it's not their life situation because they are here in D.C. and they are either drinking from the local water supply which mostly in this area is fairly good or they're drinking bottled water because they can afford it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the key word is because they could afford it. Yeah. And uh, that water is so filthy and disgusting. There's no water filter system that would be able to tackle that. That is that is terrible. Like I said, it's so thick. That is disgusting. Mm-hmm.